Good morning, children. Today is Armistice Day. On Sunday, we had Remembrance Sunday. And for many of you, in your schools, you might have had assemblies or you might have been talking about war and there might have been older children in your schools coming round and selling these poppies. I thought today we would talk a little bit about it all. See if we can't unpack it and work out what it all means. Armistice. Any idea what that word means? That's right. It's a state of peace between two parties. On this day, the 11th of November, in 1918, an agreement was signed. This agreement was to end the fighting as a first step of peace to the end of World War I. And so, at 11am on the 11th of November, 1918, all fighting stopped. And that's why at 11 o'clock on the 11th day of the 11th month, we have a two minute silence so we can remember these things. Why do we want to remember? Well, do you know what? It's a time when we can remember all those who served in the world wars so that we could have the freedom to live the way we live today. We unite, we stand together on Remembrance Sunday and on Armistice Day to remember the service and the sacrifice of all those men and women who were and are in our armed forces. We recognise all the work of the emergency services as well. And we recognise all those innocent people who lost their lives in conflict and acts of terrorism. All those in our armed forces who lost their lives and the families who lost their loved ones. And that is what we remember at 11 o'clock. The heroes of war. There were lots of heroes in the First and the Second World War. All of the soldiers were heroes in the First and the Second World War, whether they lost their lives, whether they were injured or whether they survived and came home. I want to pick up on one nurse. Her name was Edith Cavell. Now, Edith was an amazing lady. She worked as a nurse in the war and she worked at a hospital in another country. She worked in Belgium, which is mainly where the, the war was in Western Europe, mainly. So a lot of even British people had to go overseas to be able to help serve during the war. Now, in this hospital, she was looking after lots and lots of injured people. And she helped over 200 British and French soldiers escape from the Germans during the First World War. Jimmy the donkey. That's my second war hero. The story is told that Jimmy was born in the trenches of World War I and he brought a smile to lots of the soldiers' faces. They raised him and he would have been used to carry supplies to the front lines of the war and it was said that he was injured some seven times. Now, during the war, there were lots of other animals that were used, dogs, horses. They would have all been used to find wounded men and women and carry them to hospital 
or to carry supplies to the men and the women serving during the war. Some people don't believe that this story is true. Whether we believe it or not, he was brought back to Peterborough and he was bought by the RSPCA and he became their mascot here in Peterborough. Jimmy was loved by the children and he helped to raise lots and lots of money for neglected animals for the RSPCA. So many others that we could name that have done heroic acts during war. And all those who served and died in the First and the Second World War are named on war memorials. There's one in Farset and there's one in St John's Church and there is one in Whittlesea too. And there is also a memorial for Jimmy the Donkey in Central Park in Peterborough. These men and women and animals showed great courage in the face of war. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 it says, Be strong and brave. Don't be afraid. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <gasps> what a fantastic verse is that. It still takes great courage to serve our country in the face of possible death. And as we remember, all these heroes of old and of war, we can thank God that even in these difficult circumstances that we're in, we're not in war, are we? But we're in lockdown and we've got a pandemic going on. It's not very nice for everybody at the moment, is it? But do you know what? Even in all of this that's going on for us, God can still be with us. Poppies. That's the last thing to talk about this morning. Red poppies. Red poppies. During the war, the red poppies grew in the fields where the men and the women were fighting. And a Canadian doctor that was um, serving in the war wrote a poem about these poppies. And so the poppy became a mark of respect, something that we wear to remember all those who died during the war. Now, how many of you have seen purple poppies? A few of you. Yeah. Purple poppies are something that was introduced a couple of years ago and they are worn to remember the service animals like Jimmy the donkey and the other animals like the dogs and the horses that were used to carry um, injured men and women and to carry um, supplies, food, ammunition, all the things that the soldiers needed during this wars. I think we finished for today, don't you? I don't think there's much more that we can talk about on this subject. If there's something that you think of, maybe you could send me a message and we'll see if we can remember it another time. But for now, let's close our eyes and let's just say a little prayer. Lord, help us to lift our eyes to you in a broken world. As we honour the heroes of the past, help us to be strong and courageous. May we put our faith in you, for you are the source of all life and hope. Thank you for promising to be with us wherever we go, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>